rent was way overdue. I was in crazy debt and I'm sat here making tunes, thinking I just dashed away a career that everyone wants to do to run at this music shit that might not even work. There was times I just laugh at myself and go, yeah, but I'm gonna make it though. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. And if you wanna watch this episode completely ad-free with no censorship whatsoever, because let's face it, at Scarlet, there's gonna be a little bit of bad language. Click the join button down below to become a member, just like all these very wonderful people. Anyway. Hello, Scarlord. <laughs> like, holy shit. <laughs> it's My happening. brother, man. It's fucking happening. I know. I met you 10 years ago yeah. at a YouTube event. Mm -hmm. You used to be a YouTuber. Yeah, I did. I did vlogs, like sketch comedy. I did like a bit of everything. I took my shirt off a lot. We hung out for like one full day at Universal Studios. We f***ing clicked. I felt like you were like my long lost brother. <laughs> and then dropped off face of the earth. We didn't talk to each yeah. other. I didn't, I didn't know where you even went. I mean, the crazy thing that happened was I was talking with Corpse and he showed me your music. He like was playing your music videos. I was super into it. And then a few weeks later, he's like, oh, you remember that Scarlord guy? Yeah, I was just talking to him and he mentioned that he knows you. <laughs> and then I looked you up. I was like, what the f That's Mazzy Maz? That's Mazzy it Maz? Says, everybody had that reaction. Like I'm 28 now and like I was mm -hmm. 18 back then. Mm -hmm. Look at what I've done in these last 10 years. Dude, it's Fucking insane. Type shit. You're because okay. you're you're constantly pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. Always. Rap, trap uh -huh. metal. How do you yeah, describe yeah, yeah. Scarlord? People say trap metal. Even I, I even I said trap metal back yeah. then, but like yeah. there's like so many elements in metal yeah. that aren't present. Like I, I do my own thing. I, I have my own thing going on. So it's hard to define. It's the hard genre. to define what I do. Even I can't define what I do. Like yeah. okay, now they can Spotify. How do they label you? Oh man, they just put me in the metal thing, and I'm just like, this ain't metal, dog. Like, yeah, yeah it is what it is, though. So you, you pretty much deleted the Mazzy Maz channel. Mm, I just privated it. Um, reason being, I wanted to direct people's focus. Had the subscribers it had, and it had an audience and a fan base, and it was a platform that I could have used to do anything, but I had to put all that aside, I have to sacrifice that to really go for something else. And, you know, I understand how that looks. It looks like I'm hiding. Mm. Like some people can make that narrative. Like, like you're running away like from Like I'm your running past. away from my past, but mm. not at all. I'm just directing the focus. Like I did what, man, people wish they could fucking do that. Stop it. Bro, what I did, <laughs> what I did, I'm gonna talk my shit. What I did, what I fucking did, yeah. I blew up over here yeah. relatively. Okay, whatever you call blowing up. Okay, I was a Cecil mm. YouTube, whatever. And I shut it down, like you said, mm -hmm. radio silence. And I came round the back, like you said, 10 years later. It's like, I couldn't believe that this is you. Yeah. Still successful. And it's like, holy f here's all the things that you've been doing exactly. in between. Whether I do YouTube, whether I do music, where I decide to f this off and do something else again. Mm. The value's with me. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I can delete everything off the internet tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'll be on the next day with something else. Mm -hmm. I can take it from the beginning if you like. Let's go. <clears throat> In the beginning. Yes, yeah, start, start at the beginning. <laughs> start at the beginning. Sperm okay. cell. Okay, sperm cell. Right, cool. <laughs> that early. Yeah. <laughs> I was a dancer in Wolverhampton mm -hmm. and that's how I was kind of earning a living. I was only 16 years old. But like at that age, I was that good at dancing that my dance crew would take me to like the events and stuff where we were getting paid. We um, applied for a grant, which let us get a camera because I, I, I wanted to film a trailer for the dance crew. And I filmed the trailer and I edited the trailer, but I just had this camera. So I was like, okay. So I started to make like dance videos. Mm. There's a old YouTube channel of mine before my main YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It's called Fizzy Vimto 3Gs. They're all gonna f say. <laughs> yeah, is it, is it still up? Uh, it's still up. Okay, I cool. don't have the password for that, so oh. I, can't, I can't even delete it. And then I kind of started to put my personality in there more. And then mm -hmm. that's why I had the idea. It's like, well, I might as well take a stab at the YouTube thing. I remember getting that first check from AdSense. Yeah. It was three pound. <laughs> I showed nice. my mom, I was like, three pound. And she was like, what do you mean three pound? It's three pound, but I can turn that into maybe a thousand and a half, mm. like if I tried. Mm. And that's what I did. So said, so done. Mm. Moved out at like 17. And then boom, had a career as a YouTuber. That there was the blessing and a curse to have a career mm. that young, because you don't know who you are at 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah. You don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. 28, I'm like, mm, still figuring it out. Still trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's an endless journey. But like when you do that in front of people and like you show 
discipline and talent. And people assume you've got it figured out. Shit, they look and say, yo, he uploading two, three times a week. He, he's so bubbly and happy. Mm. He's so this, he's so that. He's, he's got it together. And that's not the case at all. I just was so practiced in that that I could just do it all the time. And that's what I did. I started to grow up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's when I started to experiment more with music because I've been rapping since, Jesus Christ, since I was single digits. Yeah. Do you want to hear? Yeah, you found your first recording ever. It's too small, you can't hear me. I speak very quietly, this gets skin. Spit them, chat them, follow those bars. Don't chat to me, this keen your jaws. I speak Japanese, also Russian. Okay, Don't stop, 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 stop. <laughs> the bar there was... <laughs> I speak Japanese, also Russian. Don't mess with me, I'll give you a concussion. First of all, nice. I didn't speak Japanese, didn't speak Russian. Where did those lyrics like, come from? I don't know. You're I like, weighed, they rhyme. I weighed like one kg. I wasn't giving anybody a concussion. You know what I mean? But listen, the promise was there. I was the syllables always, were there. I, yeah, I was always talking my shit. But again, I've always loved music. All my yeah. olders used to rap, you know what I mean? So it was like, I wanted to be like them. When did you officially decide to like quit YouTube? But I got to a point with YouTube where I felt like if I was to move on from it, it was then or never. Bear in mind, everyone was telling me no. Everyone telling me I was successful. Everyone was telling me to weigh it out. And I was just like, you guys, shut the f up, man. Shut up, man. I was at a point where emotionally, it was kind of f***ing with me, which is weird because it was just, it's just, when I look back, I'm like, it's just a job, but like my heart, it, my, my heart is so big. Like, I, it needs, I need to express myself, you know what I mean? And I couldn't do that through YouTube anymore. Mm. Private everything, removed everything. And then that was like, that was the hardest bit to be fair. You put so much hard work into something and you put so much of yourself into something to then just delete it and start from the beginning. Oh my God. But the difference is I wasn't bored. Mm. I wasn't bored at all. Mm -hmm. I was like absolutely buzzing. New, like I felt like I had a new lease on life. You know what I mean? I felt like I could just be like myself, like, away from everything. Because a lot of people ask me, especially YouTubers that want to transition into something else, they all come to me for some reason. <laughs> and <laughs> they, they, they all ask me, they say, yo, is it hard? And da, 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 da. And like, my only advice really is that like, if you really want to do it, you're going to have to make the sacrifice and bite the bullet and remove yourself and your spirit from that and go over and do something else. I think one of the wildest parts about reconnecting with you 10 years later is it felt like we had a connection then. It felt like we were on a similar wavelength. And then now talking with you, mm -hmm. I realized that in that 10 year span, we were both kind of facing similar things at similar times. Yeah. Like 2016, wow. 2017, yeah. Yeah. you left YouTube. That was when I left Smosh and I had to completely reinvent myself and, and know what it feels like to start from scratch mm -hmm. while everyone mm -hmm. is watching. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge thing for me to have mm -hmm. to to step away from mm -hmm. and to disconnect from the opinions that other people had yeah. of me because I was like, oh shit, am I irrelevant? Yeah. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. everything that I created, is everything that I put my heart and soul into for the previous 14, 15 years, mm -hmm. it, did I do all of that for nothing? Yeah. And am I gonna be connected to that forever now? Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it took kind of reaching what was kind of my rock bottom, I feel. Yeah. Uh, to That's realize that that go. stuff did not matter. I mean, it's crazy we mirror each other, bro. Like yeah. 100%, like, and I know how tough it is. So I fully rate you, first of all. Like, you're tough. Like, you are, man. Like, you, 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 you've got grit, you know what I'm saying? Like I was saying mm. yesterday at dinner, you've got grit. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that's not honestly. It's a theme whenever someone compliments me, I go, mm. and I, have, I, my, I can't even no, retain it. No, it's good. I can't retain that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I also hit rock bottom. Bottom, bottom. I hit rock bottom. Man. But you're is a, my accent really thick? You, is it thick? A bottom? Uh, my, I, I, I hit rock bottom. <laughs> no, I, I hit rock bottom too. You yeah, know, I did. I did. I, I can make jest and light of it now because I'm up. But like back then, shit, that shit was scary, man. That shit was scary. Yeah. I felt like I ruined my life because I put my whole self into my career and that's how I identified as me. Mm. And then when I got rid of that, I didn't really have necessarily a me. Is that so, why you kind of chose a new name mm, and stepped away yeah, from yeah, it so yeah. that you could, you, sure. you were no longer identifying with that past? Well, I didn't know who I was, so I was still looking for myself kind of thing. Mm. And I was just going on my intuition. But it was the worst when I was doing it and it wasn't working yet. I was just, someone making music in their house. My rent was way overdue. I was in crazy debt. And I'm sat here 
making tunes, thinking like there was times where I would question myself. I would be like, this is hilarious. I just dashed away a career that everyone wants to do to run at this music shit that might not even work. And I, there was times where I just laugh at myself and go, yeah, but I'm gonna make it though. You said you kind of have a, a superpower where you can turn situations that seem like negative situations mm -hmm. to most people, you can you can turn that into something yeah, yeah, positive yeah. that yeah, pushes yeah. you further. 100%. I'm in constant superposition, like an atom. <laughs> I'm constantly vibrating in superposition. Listen, sense it for me, it will fucking pass You are never me. still. I'm never still. Remember last, yeah, I'm never <laughs> last still. night you said if you become still for long enough, you'll just become bones. I'll become bones. Literally. Exactly. Literally. No, it's true. If you stay still long enough, you will become a, a sack of bones. <laughs> Life will just go, I ain't moving. <laughs> Get to work, decompose his ass, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. That's exactly what will happen, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, like, you always have to move. So for me, I'm in constant superposition. If life will throw me something, I'll go, ah, aha. Uh -huh. And it's up to me, like, what is the solution to this problem? What is my approach? Like, the higher mind is putting yourself in the future mm -hmm. because that's where there is an unlimited reservoir of creativity in the mm -hmm. future. There is no creativity here in the now, none. Because it's the past. And when you look at it with that perspective, mm -hmm. you're able to zoom out. You have to zoom out and then you look above and then you're able to be a creator. You're able to be creative about your life. Mm. Because when you start being creative about your life, that's when you can do amazing things with it because you're no longer stuck in the present moment. How does me in the future think? How does me in the future feel? How does me in the future handle pressure? How does me in the future look? How does me in the future shit? You know what I'm saying? How does me in the future get down? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and but it's true. And then that's, that's who you be. And then you, you can use that and make decisions. No. Does my higher self, does my best self, does my future self, does this decision align with that vision I have yes. of myself? Yes. Habits, um, your thinking and your habitual, think, your habitual thinking and like your automatic program to observe that and to, to, to kind of take responsibility for that and kind of like be, take responsibility for being more mindful and mm. being more conscious and thinking higher, that's mindset. So it's kind of separating yourself from mm -hmm. your thoughts, mm -hmm. your yeah, emotions, yeah. the yeah. things you see around you, the reality that you're exactly in. Exactly that. You are separate from that. Yeah. I find so much comfort in that idea, but it used to terrify me so much as a kid. Mm. And I would have these panic attacks at night, almost every single night when I was falling asleep. I thought that they were night terrors. I thought they were sleepwalking, but I'd get up and I'd feel like I was like me, like I was not my physical me. I felt like I was- Like a lucid dream maybe? Kind of, right. but it, I felt like I was observing mm -hmm. reality through mm -hmm. these eyes. And I would almost feel like I was I was just observing reality, which would be me kind of freaking out, having right. a panic attack. Yeah. I wasn't having a panic attack. It was like I was observing the body and the mind who was. And it's funny because that used to terrify me, but now, I look for that, I mm -hmm. seek that, I mm -hmm. meditate, and mm -hmm. I want to be the me that's inside mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But it's, And it sounds like you separated that, and that is what kind of, did that pull you out of the dark time, or were you already in that mindset before you it, got in it? It pulled me out of the dark time because there was no dark time. There is only times. The right. mind makes it a dark time. It's like me perceiving my actions as putting me in that place. You come from a place of, well, I can dwell in the problem or I can look for solutions mm -hmm. and I can look for good solutions. And if I really sit down, I can look for the best solution. And if I sit down even more, I can come up with a solution that even blows me away. If I don't waste my brain power on I'm I'm fam, I'm If you don't folk, if you don't do that, that's so much brain power. Was it tempting to do that? Oh my God, every second. You want to lose your shit, but then yeah. you go, that's ridiculous. Because yeah. there's no going back once you open certain things in your head. I know I can get myself out of this. And I know that for a fact. So I would just contemplate on that every day. And I will work towards that every day. And I will try to better myself every day. I will do everything I can every second of the day. Even in rest, I will rest to rejuvenate myself to get me closer to where I want to be. Even God, what he rested on Sunday, feet <laughs> up. Say, yo, man, I built this whole shit. I'm gonna kick back. Changing your lifestyle and having a lifestyle that works you and a routine that fits you. Mm. The alarm goes off, I get up, I make my bed. It sounds so stupid, but I make the bed uh -huh. and then brush my teeth and I do a bunch of stuff. I head down, I work out, I read, I cold plunge, then I start my day. And I've been doing that 
since July 2022. Listen, some people get up and pray. Some people get up and moisturize. Some people get up and scroll. <laughs> but you have Been to understand. There. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but that will start your day. If uh -huh. you start the day like that, then that's how the day starts you. The cold plunge, there's a lot of benefits mentally. Um, it's really good for your mental health, man. I started to think so much better. I had a lot more patience. Is it, is it almost the, the physical reminder that you yeah. it's okay? It's okay. And it nev you never get used to it. Yeah, it's always uncomfortable. It's always uncomfortable. Uh, I like to shiver. I like, can feel cold. People hate that feeling. Yeah, they hate that feeling. But like, it's a, it's an amazing thing to do for your body. But also your your mental state. It, it's a constant yeah. reminder that you can invite uncomfortable things and yeah. that you can withstand them. Yeah, yeah. And you know that there's a five minute timer, yeah. and all you got to do is do the thing. Yeah. And so sometimes though, bro, I'll be honest. I'll sit down and look at that. I look at the ice in the bath. I just be looking at that shit. And I'll be looking at my phone for a song for five minutes and I'll be like, okay, f it, I'm getting in, I'm getting in, you know? And you can find yourself procrastinating. Even like sometimes like you might do a workout, yeah. but you might not go as hard. Some days you go in there, like you f***ing, you're f***ing swollen, you're f***ing, you did an extra 10 reps and you did another set and all this shit. And then some days you go in there and you're like, f and you just do the work. The important thing is the 1% thing, like you were saying, show up and do it. When I first started doing dips. For the um, shoulders. For the shoulders, <laughs> chest. I'd start the day with like an abacus, 10 stones on the left side of the rail. And each stone represented 10 reps. And I'd do 10 reps, move a stone to the other side. And at the end of the day, the goal was to have the stones on the left all move to the right. So it's so 100 reps. 100 reps. So it made working out interesting. Mm. Working out's fucking boring, man. Takes years to find your routine. I'm still tweaking my routine. I had a time where like for like three months I had piano for an hour in my routine. Mm -hmm. Sack that off. <laughs> You're like, that's not helping me at all? It is, it was, it was fun, but it just wasn't fun enough for me. I, and I learned so much. Mm -hmm. That definitely skills, all skills transferable. You get good at one thing, you can get good at everything. If a really high level YouTuber decides to quit YouTube, keep your eye on them. Keep your eye on them. Once a threat, always a threat. Let's start, let's run it back from the beginning. <laughs> gotta come up with a video idea. Then once you got that, you gotta like write the script for it. Then once you got that, you gotta turn the camera on. And then once you got that, you gotta get the lights right. Then once you get that, you gotta make sure the camera in focus. Then you gotta make sure the mics is working, the levels is right. Then you gotta make sure you're presenting yourself correctly, that you're gonna gather an audience. Then you gotta make sure, you know, you get the edit down packed. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta be, have skills in edit, make sure it's engaging and you're doing the right thing. Then you gotta brand your channel. And then you gotta get the thumbnails going. Then you gotta get the title going. Then you gotta make sure you're consistent enough and dropping enough. If someone can jump through all those hoops and be successful, mother they're gonna be successful for life, bro. That is like, especially in this media driven world we're in today, this content, content is, content is king. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? That fucking world we live in, man. You know what I'm saying? Especially in that world we live in now. Like if you're, if you're fucking, if you have the ability to hustle like that, you're gonna be fucking sound. That was the one of the things that like I was grateful for when I stepped in to doing music. It's like, that was one of the reasons I got to where I did so fast because we could turn things around. We go, write the tune, make the tune, drop the tune, make the music video, drop the music video. It felt like you were doing the YouTube stuff. It felt like you were disciplined already with those already, things. Already, I mm. was already seasoned for it, already. Mm. That's why I could just keep it going. And it was just a matter of time. Yeah. And again, people don't let themselves do that though. You have someone, an individual who is fucking crazy good at, I don't know, fucking communicating, right? But he wants to then go into, you know, picking up an instrument. But he struggles to see the connection between the two. How can I, I'm good at this, but I'm not good at that. Wrong. You're good at both. You're good at all. But you have to understand what made you so good at this thing and how can you extract that and put that into mm. this over here. People think talent. Oh, you just talent is. I think it's just innate. There's no such thing as talent. There is mm. no such thing. Talent is the biggest scam in the world. It is. Oh, he's talented. Listen, born that's talented. Born talent. Nobody's born talented. Nobody's born talented. Even the most fucking pro today, fucking youngest kid on the keys. If you could go into their mind, you'd be like, oh, they're oh, they're just seeing things and looking at things in a different way. You hear the term genius get thrown around. It's mm -hmm. like. Well, no, he just put the hours in. It's about repetition. Repetition. It's about reps. patience. It's reps. about discipline. Mm -hmm. You just heard me rapping when I was eight. Mm -hmm. 
and then compare that to one of my latest song that I'm about to drop. If you, yeah. the, the two, it's like you wouldn't even think it was the same person. No. But there's that level of persistence there and mm -hmm. that non-stop kind of like heading towards something and getting better at it and just refining it and refining it and refining it. People are so afraid to fail, man, these days. Yeah. Failure plagues everybody, mm -hmm. bro. And we were talking yesterday man. about how, you know, if you're practicing something, if you have discipline to mm -hmm. keep practicing doing that thing, even if you're getting 1% better each day, it adds up over time and people get 15, 20% better and they say, ah, this isn't really showing much mm -hmm, improvement. And then mm -hmm. they stop and they, they stop. regress. Yep, exactly. When they could have kept going and, and yep. seen the gains. Seen the gains. Over time. Failure is like, in a lot of cases, the catalyst for greatness. Mm. You know what I mean? Off the back of failure, people do their best things. And we live in like this world where everyone will say everything. For example, like you and Smosh, like, people will try to make it, you feel like you fail. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? People yeah. will try to make you feel like you fail. They would literally like, say Smosh is better without you. You like, what the f you have that? nothing without that. You're irrelevant. You're irrelevant. And you're that this. would hit me, yeah, you know? I'd be, like, I'd be like, oh, fuck, I am nothing. It's the stuff you say to yourself, but when someone else confirms, you go, man. The only way that it gets you, though, is if you do say those things to yourself. Because yeah. if you never say those things to yourself and you never allow yourself to think those things, yeah, you just yeah, don't yeah, believe yeah, it, then sure. anyone could say anything for about sure. that and you would just, it would be like it was- No, exactly, exactly. I mean, that's it. The, the things we say to ourselves in during those times is way worse than what anybody could really say to us. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? A lot of people get paralyzed by that. Like secondhand fucking oh shit. Mm. So it's like this phenomena, we love to see people get canceled mm -hmm. and we love to see all this shit, but it keeps everybody in line because yeah. it's like, Rather him than me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even observing Even it. Even observing it. It's kind of like it. the public display so like you yeah. don't do it. Observing it raises the fear and they fear failure so much worse because they watch other people fail or people succeed and everyone perceive it as failure and they sit back and they go, well, f*** it. Every hero's journey has that chapter, right? Yeah, 100%. Initiation by fire or something. Like, mm -hmm. you get, you get, burned and shamed by everybody and then from that you rise from the ashes because kind you have of nothing thing. to lose you have nothing to lose despite all of that it's rare though people like me and you it's rare what we did because with us we didn't stop with us we doubled down actually and we kept going that's quite rare a lot of people would have turned back you know people like that want to push through and have the grit to just carry on and just do something else and be successful in that the numbers is dwindling Mm. Is dwindling. And you know, that's why conversations like this are good because hopefully someone can hear it and be like, you know what? Yeah, I do want to make that rug cleaning business. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, some shit. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like people are super inspired by your story because mm -hmm. you, you did completely reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. You behaved in the way that you saw your future self to behave and did the things that you saw your future self to do. Even going as far as you know, when you when you had when you're in that apartment, you were you would use the apartment yeah, yeah, space yeah, and you would yeah, imagine yeah, that yeah, it was yeah, a yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would practice, like you said, in my apartment, but I'd do it lengthways, not wide ways, because wide ways was still like all right, but I didn't want to play on stages that big. <laughs> I wanted to play on stages that big. I think it was that summer I played play I played like a lot of blues and I played like a bunch of crazy festivals and shit. How did you find yourself on stage? Oh you know? man, yeah. I was ready for it. I was itching for it, man. I went up there and I just blew people away from jump and people left like, yo, this guy, oh my God, this is sick. And then from there, doing bigger shows, I could handle it. You know what mm. I mean? Because, and even doing my own shows, I could handle it. Mm -hmm. Because like, listen, the performance is, is what, one of the biggest things I love about this. Mm -hmm. It's like the performance aspect, getting up on stage and fucking killing it. Your stuff sounds so angry. It's so fucking high energy, intense, aggressive. Like every single thing you do is so fucking loud and over the top. Is it? <laughs> yep, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's very loud like that. And people would be like, this guy's this is this guy insane? Is he angry? But like you don't seem you don't seem the least bit. Expression, angry, you know expression, I mean? expression. I think I think it's it, it does the sound a disservice to say it's just angry. Listen, we've all been through trauma. I'm not gonna sit here and fing tell you about that part of my life, but like <laughs> we've all been through things. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's good to have that like expressive outlet. Um, for me, that's doing this type of sound is what it is. I don't resonate with 
the idea that it's just like vexing angry music for angry people. Anyone that says that hasn't really listened to me or they listen to me and go, yeah, this is just him screaming and yelling. They haven't took the time to take that extra step and be like, okay, let me just open my mind and just like take this in. You know yeah. what I mean? And if they did that, they'd probably still hate it. But, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But there's a, there's an off chance that they, they might like it. I mean, it's a weird thing where I feel like even when I listen to your music, it feels like it's it's like the balance that I need in my life. When I hear this aggressive, intense shit that you put out, it feels like it's answering a part of me that's there without me needing to express it in physical ways. You know what I mean? Like some testosterone guys like punching walls and shit. <laughs> that's exactly what it is, bro. I think having an outlet is more important now than ever. The type of music you make is so loud that I feel yeah. like people would assume that you live in like a loud city. I live somewhere nice. So we're quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it is quiet and it's nice and I can be free and I can be immersed in nature and I can go on walks and I can be around people who have had an entirely different perspective on life to my own. Environment is one of the most important things for me, I feel. If my environment is nice, the chances of me being nicer to myself increase. Mm. And then the chances that I have nice results increase. So it starts mm. with environment. So I gotta get my environment right. Mm -hmm. Do you like candles? I love candles. Best thing ever. Candles <laughs> yeah. will change your life, bro. Yeah. The scent of a room. I use candles to make music. So I have this candle that I'll light it only if I'm recording and something about when the room starts to smell like the candle and I've been recording, there's just something, I want to say communion. Like there's like this kind of like, there's something ritualistic about it. Like there is a ritual. Like, it's a reminder that you're going to make magic. It's like I'm making magic because I'm lighting the candle and because I'm lighting the candle, I'm making magic. I read this book called The Expectation Effect. Mm. And it talks about how your expectation of something mm -hmm. directly influences the outcome externally and internally mm -hmm, mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm, in such an mm -hmm, odd way. And, mm -hmm. and one of the things that it talks about is rituals and how when you have an expectation that when you do something that things are gonna be better. I have, I drink one of those uh, Yerba Mate's beforehand and when I'm drinking it, I'm like, it's gonna be a good one. This is my. This is gonna yeah, be a good one. It's the same. And every time that I, I'm like, this is the good. This one. is a good one. Yeah. And yeah. every time it is. It is. Yeah. It's a banger every time. Yeah. There you go. See, we letting them in, man. We're <laughs> the secrets, bro. It's strange, you know, because I feel like you can go the opposite way too. Absolutely. You get caught up in thinking negative feedback. Things loops. are gonna be horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, yeah, listen, and they will. The, the, that's the craziest thing about the human mind. You are always right. If you think you can't do it, it's because you can't. You think you can do it, because you can. Mm -hmm. You think you're going to be successful, because you are. You think you can't, because you won't. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. And it's your choice every second. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to feel like how you should be feeling to get where you want to go or feel how you want to feel. The, the shit we've been talking about isn't just bound just for career stuff. Yeah. It also applies in your real life too. By the way, this episode is sponsored by Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spendings, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Like for me, recently I found out that I have been subscribed to Fabletics for the past eight years, which put me out $5,000, and I'm not alone, okay? Most Americans are just as stupid as me, and I think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions when it's actually closer to 200. Rocket Money shows all your subscriptions in one place, and then it cancels anything you don't want for you. It can even find subscriptions that you didn't know you were paying for. Yes, I did just find out that I was double paying for Spotify, but that's okay. I, I, my therapist knows all about it. So if you want to stop throwing your money away, if you want to cancel your unwanted subscriptions and you want to manage your expenses the easy way, go to rocketmoney.com slash Padilla. That's rocketmoney.com slash Padilla. And yes, I am going to say it one more time. So listen closely and only one more time, rocketmoney.com slash Padilla. Now back to the world of Scarlord. I feel like we should play a, a, a small snippet of your most popular track. Is your most popular track Heart Attack? Because it has like over 100 million plays okay, on yeah, YouTube yeah, yeah, and yeah, over 100 okay, million plays yeah. on Spotify. Yeah. If you want to.
Yeah, thank you. Thank it's you. so hard. Show us uh, what your new sound is, because do you think this is going to define you? Do you think this is the next chapter in what defines Scarlord? I'm you... just better. I'm just better. <laughs> okay. Hold on to your fucking hats. I'm about to blow your shit away. That gets my heart rate so fucking high. Let me play you some new shit. Okay, you, you better okay. like this as much because this smokes this. Hold on. Yeah. I didn't play this one yesterday. Ooh, no, you didn't play this one. All right, hold this, on to your hands. This is one of your hardest songs. Hold on to your seats, bitch. It's Scarlet, bitch. Oh my god. I felt whatever you can felt while you made that. <laughs> yeah, bro. I felt that. You were telling me that the 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 style, your style, the aesthetic, the visual aesthetics influenced the music and the music yes. influenced that. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a it, that they fed off each other kind of. When it comes to visuals, it's fashion first. Can we sell it? Can, can we make it look good? And look what's happened because of it. Like I have my own clothing line now. I bought you some stuff, by the way, bro. Do, do I get some Doom Life some doom? stuff? Catch, catch, oh shit, wait, catch, what is- Catch, 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 catch. <laughs> Sorry, Sam, we go it's, called, it's, called, it's called Doom Life, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And again, this is just like, this is just something, so I didn't want to come empty-handed. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like an oversight thing. But like, I, I didn't want to come empty-handed for you. Mm. Well, look at that. Mm. Yeah, by the way, when you travel yep. through the airport, it's yep. like, it's going to give you so much hassle. Why? Because you got to- Metal tags everywhere, oh my uh. god. <laughs> I went through the airport wearing something similar to this, actually. Yeah, Listen, yeah, yeah. I said to boss man, I said, bro, take me to dinner first, man. He was feeling. I like this one. It says, f off world. Yeah, so pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> this is why people think you're an angry person. Yeah, no, I think, <laughs> listen, it's, it's a good thing to make the world f off, you know? It, it needs to f off sometimes. How do you deal with criticism? Because that comes with the scene, right? Yeah, it comes with anything. It comes with doing anything in public. Like, criticism isn't something that I, it's not in my jurisdiction. You know what I mean? Mm. To care about. Because mm. if I was to care about that, I wouldn't be making honest art. I would be making art that was even good, like I thought was mm. good, because I'd be making something based on the conversation around me. What brings you the most joy about what you do? It would be the simple things, I guess. Being able to have a conversation with you after 10 years. Not to be a fucking total hippie about it, <laughs> but like genuinely though, going outside, fresh air. Sounds so basic, man. <laughs> But that brings that that is like it's the simple things the like being able to disconnect brings me a lot of joy and sometimes it's hard not to scold myself for being so dr work driven but again that's just I'm now finding myself being around like attracting and being around people who are also like that the work that you do it refills you 100% you know a lot of people get caught up in in the work that drains them yes but the work that you do refills you. Yeah, so, absolutely. So that's where the balance comes in mm -hmm. in your life. Yeah. yeah, the work refills me, the creative outlet refills me. I feel like we've both been through, like you said, it's two sides of, of, of the same mountain. Like there's a million ways to skin a cat, there's a million ways to climb the same mountain. And it's just like- We both went very different routes, very but I different feel like routes, yeah, yeah. our mindset- It's the is, DNA is, is the so, same. so, so, so close together. For there. sure, for sure. Long lost. Brother vibes. For sure. <laughs> Thank you, man. Wild come here, Thank man. You, man. Wild brother, man. Honestly, yeah, yeah. man. You'd put my music on if you was trying to add a couple plates to the bench press. Draw me on. <laughs> I literally I mean? listen to your shit on loop when I'm working out. 100%. Yeah, Listen, yeah. You, your testosterone up, bro. 100%. <laughs> and then someone who is trying to be hyper-focused would listen to me. Or if someone is preparing for combat. They listen to me. Because, like you oh, said, you know like what I'm literally. So, so, yeah, the people that listen to my music, like some of them, I'm in, intimidated by, intimidated by uh, <laughs> type shit, you know what I mean? Uh, it's like, yo, yo, I'll f that. I'll be like, 
Yeah, cool, fam. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be right Ooh. over here. I was like, yeah, I was like, baby, you see him? He was scary. <laughs> f***ing hell. Thought it was over with. Done at 28, f***ing hell. 